I don't know if, um, if you watching this particular little spot on YouTube are uh, one of the many of us that watched the TV revelations regarding what was done to sheep being export, exported to the Middle East. But I, I felt I want to make a comment on that. I, I've had a lifetime of interesting relationship to animals. I've had an extraordinary number of pets, everything from a, a bat that had a broken wing, which I healed and eventually it flew away. But I kept it for quite some months to bring it back to health. Uh, I've had reptiles and all sorts of animals and took out a license to keep endangered species. Uh, to encourage any that uh, might need help. And uh, so I've, I've had a real love for nature that I think I've expressed in previous posts on YouTube. But when I saw that sheep export market uh, revelation, I just felt absolutely sick. I, I know a bit about the sheep uh, business because um, there was a stage where I spent some months uh, working for the Scottish Australia Company out near Miles in Queensland as a jackaroo. And so, you know, the drenching of sheep and uh, the whole question of mulesing uh, to stop blowflies from infecting the rear ends of the sheep, all that stuff I'm familiar with. But when I saw that show on television, I just felt sick and I could, I, I, I could hardly even watch it. It was like one of those shows where you squint your eyes because you, you want to know what it's saying, but you can't really bear to look at it right on. So I know a bit about sheep and I, I know a bit about farming. Most of my young days were spent in rural areas where my dad was a minister, in Methodist churches in a number of rural districts. And so all that stuff's fairly uh, familiar to me. But when I saw what's being done uh, to those sheep, uh, there was just no way I could find it anywhere in my heart to excuse the horror of that whole business. And I'm reminded of the fact that the Bible has something to say about this, actually. Uh, when we had one of our little schnauzer puppies die, uh, we had a little funeral service and my ga grandchildren gathered around and we we had a little service where we looked at what the Bible said about animals. And one of the verses in the wisdom literature says, the righteous person cares for the needs of his or her animals. The righteous person cares for the needs of their animals. And I know my wife used to say to young women when they were infatuated by some sporty young man, she'd say, go and check up how he behaves towards his mother and how he behaves towards his pet dog. <laughs> I used to laugh at that. There's a lot of truth in that. A person that is cruel towards his animals is a real risk when it comes to the area of domestic violence, I believe. But I want to say it's, it's interesting that the Bible is not unreal about the fact that the natural order has provided all sorts of things uh, for sustaining the various levels of, of the animal world. And when you watch those wonderful shows of Attenborough, you, know, you wince a bit when you see a, a few lions attacking a giraffe. I mean, nature's not all that pleasant. But one thing the Bible seems to point out is that cruelty is a nasty, dark side of human nature that we ought to have nothing to do with. And I was reminded that when they keep on excusing it by saying, well, you know, it's all about the marketplace and, and we need the sheep industry and so, so on and so on, so forth. I'm reminded that John Wesley, the great Methodist preacher, when he wrote his book, Thoughts on Slavery, in the 1700s, uh, was tackled, uh, tackled vigorously by the politicians of his day. Uh, he took it up well before Wilberforce, the politician. Um, Wilberforce was only a young lad about 12 years of age, I think, when Wesley 
wrote his book, Thoughts on Slavery. But Wesley said, even although he was a very strong supporter of, of, of democracy and, and behaving well towards politics, he said that the people should act in civil disobedience because slavery was such a cruel, inhumane practice. And the people of that day said, Wesley, you're a fool, because if you stop slavery, the economy of England actually rests a great deal upon the profits that come from this massive industry around the world of slavery. And he wouldn't back off, and he said they should uh, definitely be civilly disobedient towards government, even if it was legal to do it, it was immoral to do it. And I just want to say it's interesting to see this argument about the cruelty towards animals being exported. That it's the same old, same old argument. We can't stop it because it's good for the economy. Well, I want to say, my friends, in the end, something that's good for the economy but is destructive to the morality of, of human beings on this planet, in the end, is going to cost us anyway, massively financially. These things always have a bad kickback. But beyond that, worst of all, our children will grow up with their own moral view of the world tainted and distorted. It's time we took seriously the old book's wisdom that the righteous person cares for the needs of his animals. And it's time we put a stop to this and didn't just politically talk about it, but took action and, and took the people that are doing these things out of their highly paid jobs and made them face the consequences of the cruelty of their actions. I think that's a Christian responsibility, frankly. It's not just a secular argument. This is a moral issue and it ought to, be, ought to be taken as more seriously than mere mathematics and mere economics. This is about the moral character of our future generations of young people watching the way we as adults behave towards this wonderful animal order that we live with on planet Earth.